you could love the law of the ultramarines for example but love the look of the blood angels and there's a chapter for you there is probably a successor chapter for whatever chapter you want to pick that looks like the other one that you prefer the look of all the new space marines that were revealed by gw we fortunately got to uh, preview for the article but to tie them in We've done all Ultramarine successes. Scythes of the Emperor, Marines Errant, Castellans of the Rift, Genesis Chapter, Brazen Consoles, Aurora Chapter, Iron Snakes, and Black Consoles. I'm back. Yeah, you're back. What's the notes? Well, firstly, I go away for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I had the feeling this was coming, Joe. I don't absolute, know about you. <laughs> an absolute carnage and shit ensues. It's like, it's like leaving Mr. Bean in charge of your china. <laughs> Like, you know, it's... it's right. that we are uh, seconds into the episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we, so like, I'm going to say this now. Like, this preamble is going is to Mr. be... Mr. Bean this, known this, for, Hang on, let's not gloss over <laughs> that. Hang on a second. No, no, <laughs> let's right. not gloss over that. Is Mr. Bean known for destroying China? I don't he, know. He, he's the clumsiest... Like, have you ever oh, he's pretty Mr. clumsy, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah, but it's not like Bull in the China shop. It's like Mr. Bean Mr. in Bean your China cabinet. I'd probably <laughs> say that Mr. Bean's worse than a Bull in the China shop. Yeah. But anyway... This preamble is going to be spicier than Del Boy's Vindaloo from Star of Bengal. <laughs> all right, okay. Like, I, I, I go away for a week. He's been thinking of all week. I go away for a week. <laughs> there's a reference for the anyone over over 35. If you don't watch Only Fools and Horses, you, you need to. Um, but yeah, so, so I don't know what happened in the week that I went away or why you decided to turn on every 90s nostalgia fanboy in existence but I'm going to fly the flag and fight that fight because it's it's it, it, it needs to be feel, fought this feels like a like a WWE promo <laughs> I feel like Hulk Hogan's coming for me I told you that you've been saying like, my first holiday in a long time so yeah. so I, I came back and I'm I'm recharged so yeah. so yeah but he's been sat there on the beach like thinking of like little Jamesism. he's, like, he's right been sat now. there on the beach he's gone Del Boy's been the loot write that down Mr. Bean trying to shop Mr. Bean <laughs> I, I've got to say that I watched the episodes. It was good. I, I and agree. We I agree. The I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Thanks, James. <laughs> onto the topic for this week. I agree. I agree with a lot of a lot of bits and bobs here and there. However, on certain things, you were more you were wrong on more levels than a skyscraper in Dubai. Okay, so so you've got to understand that there are a lot of people out there that their experience of this is only relatively new, which I understand. And then you're not going to look at like an old bit of artwork. He's one of them. Yeah. That's he, one of them, right he, there. He, well, he's, he eats refreshes, doesn't he? What'd you yeah, expect? yeah. So, so That's um, what, that was the was the point of the the podcast. I, I get it. However, there have been more references to the refreshes, by the way. How? <laughs> however, <laughs> there are a lot of people which this red boxes, old paint, uh, red handle brushes. I could go on. All those things are super, super important to the. So the history of how they got into this and where they come from. And, and, and I think that you touched on some very good points in the episode, definitely. However, I think it was not feeling that. Swayed, swayed a tiny bit in favor of, because there are a lot of people that maybe haven't experienced those things. It, it's, 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 it's the heritage of where our hobby comes from. And, and I think that, that that was the point of the podcast, though, was that we hear from the people that did experience those things all of the time, and we get told by those people, "You must, you must prefer. You must this. be nostalgic for this thing that was around it's ten years case, before yeah, you were born. Yeah, yeah. You it's, must be. You must love it. Case, it's not a case of must. It's just you know. It, I guess it's like it's history. It's it's where where this all started. I did say I did from, say that. We know. did say on the episode as well. Like we yeah. like a bit of vintage Warhammer. Like yeah, I'm into yeah. the retro stuff. I think it's fun. And I did say. The reason I, I kind of came to the conclusion that the reason why um, people are more nostalgic for that than than what I would be nostalgic for is because it's part of the history of yeah. the of the, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, I, th I think I think it's a uh, I think a good position to be in to have a fine balance of both. I in, in all honesty and, and just transparency. Yeah. I think doing a bit of research, finding out a bit about the past, is also really helpful because it's as we always talk about, it's nice to add in those little flares into new stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's a really good way of complementing both. Um, you know, and, and again, there's nothing to say it's wrong with, with just you get into it and you don't know any other stuff. But if you're as crazy passionate as 99.9% .9 of our community are into this, finding out a bit about the past is, is also really interesting as well. Um, yeah. I don't think know. anyone's disputing that. Yeah. 
But, no um, argument. But no, yeah, yeah you done yeah, good. It was good, good episode. I'm not going to lie. I yeah. thought, it was, thought it was good. I just had to yeah. fight the fight for. I could see it. It was seething. Was it was getting coming. pretty yeah. pretty rolled up before we started I filming. Went, <laughs> I went. I went. Did you watch the episode? And he went. I've got notes. <laughs> I've got notes. <laughs> I've got notes. Yeah. No, it was good. It was really good. And uh, yeah, no, I had a good holiday. It's good to 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 get away. I haven't had a proper holiday in a very long time. Um, like going to events and going to like SN GT, like. Um, but um, but yeah, me and Reeve hadn't had a proper holiday like away for a long time, so it was good. Um, didn't get a tan, as you can see. Like you know, <laughs> I could go on a tour. Well, at one go... point you were telling me you were going to take all your painting stuff. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and you were going to just be painting. That, that, that weren't going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you did that. I think it's good to take a break from from painting for a while. Yeah, uh, not just painting in general. Like yeah, I, I you know uh, I I really needed some time off after such a long time. But um, but but yeah. like specifically on the mini painting thing, like the focus of the show. Like I think taking. It seems like a bad idea because you're like, oh, if I like I'm away from the brushes, I'm gonna like come back a bit rusty or whatever. But I think like you need that because I think if you just keep on, it's it's surprising how you're like better after a break than if you'd just been powering through. If you get what I mean, I find that I could like be painting all week and like go really really hard and I'd burn yeah. myself out. But if like if I'd done five days, I probably would have got more done. If you get what I mean, like yeah, yeah. come back refreshed. Uh, yeah, and I think that's one of the things that even with work like i took my laptop but i didn't i literally turned it on once to do one thing um at, but yeah i didn't use it at all while i was out there so it was it was it was and i do feel massively refreshed coming back like for work and also for thing and i think i've neglected that like i for anyone who knows me like i i am pretty full on with with work and stuff and and like and i i kind of neglected neglected having a holiday uh, for a very long time and i kind of like forgotten the virtues of, of having one and how much yeah. better you feel coming if back. If only you had someone in the office with you who continued to take a holiday for about the last three years. Yeah. If only that if only yeah. you had Yeah. If only you had someone like that around. Yeah, if only. Yeah. Yeah. But as I said, didn't tan. I went to some really hot places. You know, I I could go on a tour of a leather factory and still not get tanned, you know. It's just like you know, <laughs> so <laughs> so um <laughs> That one was so smooth, it just sort of skipped by. That was good. I was just going along I, that's with what the we, I, I had to buffer for that. Yeah. I took yeah. some time to process. Yeah, they yeah. tan leather in a factory. Thank no, you, James. No, no, we got, for, yeah, yeah, we got, got that. Yeah. It, got, yeah. it we just got rolled there. out it's so just, smooth. Yeah, but it was, just, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah. So it was good. Um, really enjoyable. So yeah. So, what are you uh, looking forward to getting back to most in regards to painting? Uh, so I've what's got, next on your what's next on your So I've got so I'm doing a bit of a skill swap with one of the CS team. They've made me a model. Uh, so yes, by the way, custom. Yeah, service. with custom service. Yeah. So there's a character which I'm not going to say now. I'm going to keep it a bit aloof. Um, but uh, there's a character that I've always wanted my own version of um, to match some artwork that I love. Um, you obviously know which which chapter it's from. I wonder uh, what uh, faction. If you was James and you was going to get a custom model made for you by a sculptor, yeah. I couldn't possibly think what yeah. faction you would pick. I mean, even if you chose a Marine, there's so many chapters, yeah, Joe. Yeah, there's so you, many I chapters I could be doing the, the best bluff ever right now, but unfortunately you two already... Spoiler alert, it, zero it, chance. I mean, I mean, <laughs> all I will say is it better not be a model that there's already a retro model for, because obviously we all know how good retro was. Retro is, is so good. Why would you ever yeah. want to remake a model that still exists, Joe? <laughs> there isn't a retro model for him, So Okay, okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, I've done a bit of a, uh, a skills kind of trade with one of the custom service team. Uh, they've made an awesome character Chaos Lord, uh, that's that is a modernization of a retro model, uh, and I'm going to paint that for them, and then they've made me the the model. So um, that's the, the the Chaos model, which I've already put on my personal Insta painting Instagram is is already uh, is the next thing I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm really I've got Fine. some really good ideas for it. So so yeah, um, well, I think they're good. But yeah, um, so yeah, yeah that's, the, that's. Did the, you feel like the the painting withdrawal? I did actually, yeah, because I, I saw obviously I, some of the stuff for, for the main topic obviously today, some of the stuff that got painted I, I hadn't seen yet because I've been away and I think Ad was still finishing up or working on it. And um, so, yeah, so I saw that started going up and I was like, yeah, I, I really want to get back and get painting. So, so yeah, but no, it was good. Yeah, it was really good. Joe, how's your week been? Yeah, not too, well, last time we spoke, I uh, basically had a meltdown. When I was painting, this has been going on, ongoing for a while. I've probably been here. No, no, about that, was la- that was last week. Yeah, but last like the week. saga of this model has been going back now. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't get much time in on it, do I? So it's like a, f- it's a few hours a week. So it's, it's like it's every like weekly episode like... they get their one hour update. Yeah, yeah. Um, but after we um, spoke on the last episode, I kind of took the night off and then did like 
half hour, an hour of like just the next day, like just full clean up, get the model, get rid of every problem. Mm. Um, and then eventually the next night did like, I think some of the best painting I've ever done on it. I'm going to so, jump in here because I saw you post. I saw the whip. I saw the good. whip and yeah. I was like, I've seen your painting from when you joined here yeah. to to where you are now, and that's a big jump. It's probably yeah, because yeah. he listens to a podcast every week where they just paint <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally <laughs> like it is like I have like it's almost like I have no excuse to do certain things that I would have used to skimp out on or something. You know what I mean? Because I have the conversation every day with well, like either you like, two or like other people or painters or whatever. So like I can't bring myself to. Skim power. I like to something. think that me and James live like rent free in your head, like the devil on your shoulder. <laughs> Literally, like I'm about to do something and it's like, or like I'm about to paint like a bolter or something. And I just hear it's a lens, paint it as a lens <laughs> yeah. or something like that. So, yeah, um, it's not finished. So it probably won't actually, you'll probably be able to see. There's no time constraint on it though. I think, we, no, you'll you probably yeah. see pictures of it this weekend, maybe, but it's not going to be in the episode. But. No. I'm, I'm going to take your advice. This is my little update for the week. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna kick off some Warhammer Underworlds. I think. Yeah, you mm, you said you were interested yeah. in a bit of those models. Big. Yeah, they're great. I've been looking for an excuse to get into Kill Team. Sort of fell a bit flat for me. Not gonna lie. And I'm looking for like a new a new in for like a sort of gateway game. I don't want to do an army game. Skirmish game is even a bit much sometimes. It's like especially because I'm the sort of uh, the banner bearer for my friends. Right, I'm trying to get them into it. So if I'm Taking it on board to paint like three warbands. I mean, I'm basically doing like an army at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. Underworlds, you sold me, not gonna lie. The one, the models are sick. Mm -hmm. Two, there's like the new starter sets and stuff that they've revealed like yep. the last couple of weeks. There's so only one choice. Feels like the perfect time to get into it. There's only yeah. one choice. The army of dogs. <laughs> yeah, there is one there choice. is the no, dogs. Not, no, the, the one with the dogs is War Cry. No, 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 no. That's there's underworlds are also that. The Hexbane Hunters, I think it is. No, uh, oh, I don't know. The new Warcry thing has like five dogs in it. So I was thinking Oh, okay. No, there is, there is, there is a underworld with a couple of dogs in it. Yeah. 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 So that's... Um, army of dogs. That's up there. Yeah. And a man. But yeah. yeah. Looks good fun. I've watched a few videos on it. It's a solid game. Like um, I think I'm going to reluctantly not paint them to start and just build the models and learn to play the game. Because I always do this thing where I'm like, oh, the models need to be like perfectly well painted because that's yeah. my thing. And then inevitably I never play the game. Because yeah. the models never it's, get finished. Uh, I think I think you'll want to paint them more if you play a few games with them. That's a well. good point. Yeah. That's a good point. I think you will. I think you'll be like, oh, these are amazing. Especially if you're running the dogs. I'm biased to the dogs, but yeah. Yeah, there's... Um, I've only played with a couple of different teams, so I haven't um, got like a huge experience. But I did find that in terms of learning the rules and stuff, um, any of the like Stormcast ones... It's just so like straightforward. That's good. I think the starter set comes with Stormcast. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and they're they're cool. They're all cool. Like even they're the coolest Stormcast models. Like they're all cool. Fun fact: Stormcast first models are painted as a as an army project. Oh well, there you go. So yeah. that's nostalgic for you. I think they're good. All the way back to two years ago. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> Yeah, they are pretty much like like they are the poster boys of Age of Sigmar as well. So they're good models to have. A, I think a, they're. I don't know about the new starter sets. I think they're the older armor. I'm still, you know, everyone like lost their mind when like the new, I don't know what the armor's called, like the new sleeker, like Stormcast refresh. Like they're almost like they're know, primaris yeah, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. I'm kind of into the old ones. I'm not going to lie. I prefer the newer ones. I'm not going to lie. I like the poses and the like models better. I felt like the armor was cool before. Yeah, I don't even think I've noticed enough of a difference in it to even acknowledge that. The original ones are really nice. They're cool models, but I, I, I genuinely... I just don't, don't think I was paying enough attention to Age of Sigma. That's fair. They're more like they? they're more like a they're a bit sleek, Roman. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's really good though because you got the you got the heavier ones of the new ones that are bigger. They are like the Terminator esque uh, Stormcast, if you want to call them anything. But um, and I think that the difference between those two, whereas with the older stuff, they were all very similar in size and proportion and all that kind of stuff. So I think visually, when you've got an army. Like with Marines, you can see an aggressor unit, you can see a Terminator unit, you can see... Like, that was what I struggled with. Like when I, That was my first like army project. I got the big AOS starter box. That was like, yeah. after I painted a couple of Marines getting into the hobby, I was like, right, I'll buy like a starter box. And I got the the starter box for AOS, which was obviously like all the Stormcast. This is before the new the new ones that we're talking about. And that was what I found the most boring about them was like basically no matter what unit it was, they all looked like basically the same. Yeah. Um, but that does seem alleviated now. But the, 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 the sorry, not Warcraft, the, uh, the Underworld model is really cool. Yeah. 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 I look forward to that. 
Should we do some uh, viewers' comments? Yes. Chris uh, Mini Paints says, uh, this is in regards to the nostalgia episode last week, uh, have to agree, as someone who's only been painting for a couple of years and has still never played a game, I have no nostalgia for older stuff. I think some of it looks uh, okay, but the newer stuff has way more character, in my opinion. True, this is kind of what I was going over in the episode as well. Like, these old heads trying to tell me that Second Edition Marine has more character than some of the new kits. It's just not, not true, is it? I think it depends on how you look at it. Because when you... It, there wasn't the internet or as, as much of an opportunity to find out stuff and just word of mouth and groups and things like that back then. So you would read it into the books, read into the read into sort of like the, the old codexes. Um, I think because of that, there is a lot of... Not to... To, just to give an alternate opinion, I think when you, when you didn't have all the things that we have now, like Wikipedia or Lexicanum or all this kind of stuff, you, you kind of had to read the books to find out more about the models. And I think because of that, you did have a greater sense of, of interest for the models and things because of that, I think. More of a connection. Yeah, more it. of a connection to it, I think. Yeah. Um, that's just my opinion, but there's, there's no right or wrong. It's just, yeah. you know. Uh, Necker Loves Cake, old band, I believe. I remember this name. Uh, I'm massively nostalgic for the late 80s pricing. First time I bought Space Marines was the uh, RTB001 box, and you got 30 plastic multi-part Space Marines for $9.99. I'm 41. I was painting models when I was eight years old. They were awful compared to what we have now. Metal models are an abomination. Everything is so much better now. And just quickly on that, I did a little bit of uh, research on this on the Bank of England. $9.99 in uh, 1987 it's still £27.50 today. So I feel like everyone here is like, oh, Marines used to be so cheap. Like, I know they are well, a bit was, more expensive than that. That was for 30 now. of them, though, did he say? That was 30. I would much rather have 10 of the new plastic ones for similar money. Yeah, but that's still, that was the newest thing at the time. So it's still cheap compared to now. I, I recognise that it was cheaper, but... I like, mean, you're paying they're like different 90 things, right? now. I don't think it's fair to compare the two, though. Like the quality is, they're, they're very different. I think you've got to think of the times and think of obviously the process that was involved. Like plastics back then, that a lot of the range, plastics were very mainly tanks and mainly things like that, with obviously metal additional components. A lot of your infantry in second ed was metal because of the casting process and because of just because of the nature of the cost of metal molds, uh, sorry, of uh, plastic molds, if that makes sense. Um, and, and the technology has come on leagues, like literally leagues. I just don't then. think you can compare pricing for something that even then wasn't great detail co compared to what we have now. No, you know correct. I mean? uh, there's a, there's, there's not, there's more than just the inherent detail on the actual miniatures now. It's, it's everything that goes into it's it the behind the scenes process, that you don't it, see. Yeah. You can still buy cheap miniatures of that similar quality and they're very cheap for a reason because compared to the competition, they're nowhere near as good, right? Yeah, yeah. there is that. But I think you it's probably more a flippant comment on the fact that that was the newest oh, yeah, thing for you sure. get at the time yeah, yeah. and it was obviously way cheaper the thing is I remember lots of models when they first came out like metal models and I was blown away by them like even even like in, like for example like the the old Inquisitor game the, the bigger the bigger size model oh yeah I remember so when when they <laughs> George used to love that <laughs> he played it all the time yeah, yeah. Um, uh, those when those models came out like the diff the quality of those models for the size that they are in AC metal was amazing. I thought when I was when I was younger. Are they the bigger scale ones? They're, they're like bigger the scale ones. Yeah, like scale. They're, they're much bigger. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like Captain Artemis, the Mortifactors, Death Watch Captain, like you know all that kind of stuff. Um, I think you, there was there was progression with that material as well, like metal. It did get better, but and um, but pricing as well. I, yeah, look, we all look at the back of old white dwarfs. If you've got old white dwarfs kicking around and see some of the prices in there, the old prices are are are, are, are crazy. But then inflation and this, this might there. sound a bit cliche, but do you think like they're going to get that much better in the future like than where we are now? But, uh, but you, uh, you, you say that, but like, I, the same thing applies to painting competitions and painting quality and all this kind of stuff. They, you think that you're at the precipice and then someone else does something and someone else does something and someone it's, else um, does something. So It's similar to just technology in general, I guess, because it's technology behind the process is what's going to lead to them being better. I just but think like, that technology in general feels like the last 20 years has been an insane jump. And then if you actually look at the last five years, it's like... But I feel million. like if, like a Marine, for example, if it got any more detailed for the scale, all of that detail would have to be smaller. And I just don't see either one even being able to see it with your eyes holding the model and let alone being able to paint it. Like I just don't know how much more detail they can get. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily about you know, like crispness. Mate, like they're so sharp already. People were saying that about 720p TV, <laughs> yeah, exactly. mate. It's so like real there's, life. There's always something. Yeah, yeah. I think true. I think you're always going to see that. You're always going to see progression, especially with again, look. The, the, the cost insider stuff back then there wasn't such a big design department in games workshop that there is now there wasn't the machinery the, 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 the computers the, the, the software all that kind of stuff it was very different obviously a lot was hand traditional sculpting back then but and because of that the costing obviously was substantially different but but you can't you can't kind of can't have these super crisp amazing miniatures and then not have all of that overhead and all that cost in to, to facilitate it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people just look at the inherent pro product and go, oh, that's amazing. But th there's no thought process to a lot of the stuff that goes into it, in my mind. Sometimes. Even down to the point of like, if the actual product is cheap to make, which it probably is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just look at that. Yeah, go, the R&D Oh, the markup must be up. like... Yeah. So much, but it's like, yeah, there's a lot of work that went into getting yeah. that product to be able to be. And made. also now, because so many people are into it, they've got to make thousands and thousands of them. Yeah, so yeah, just yeah. cost economy of scale, like exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Although, to the comment commenter's point, I wouldn't turn down thirty intercessors for a tenner if they wanted to go back to that. I mean, fair. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Uh, Chris Country says, oh, sorry, Chris Courty says. Uh, you will not know Hoppy Payne until you try to build a second edition land speeder. <laughs> oh, well, I've never tried. So they are uh, they are a little bit uh, a little bit um, difficult. James not not look, holding James up, looks, really, James. You're James not looking looks, great. James looks scarred from thinking about it. Yeah, your uh, your comments at the start of the episode about how amazing all the uh, the old retro stuff is not standing the uh, the test of this conversation. Amazing can have lots of, lots of connotations. The look of it, the feel of it, the way it paints. Building is a connotation of that. It doesn't mean it's a good thing. So, you know, um, yeah. If, if, if you know what they say, Joe, amazing can mean terrible too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If 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 anyone remembers the very first Thunderhawk that they made, the metal one, you needed like a a, a, a NASA degree to to, to 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 build it, and and more more metal pin than you can imagine. I don't think so, my uh, Mister Bean skills would. Uh, yeah, quite don't give one to Mister Bean. I think quite, um, no, you called us. You were saying that we're Mister Bean. Yeah, no. I think. Uh, Chris might actually be a, a previous Siege client as well. I feel like okay. I, I've spoken to him before, if that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, name so good, good to see him listening to the, the podcast. Tezza B says, absolutely love the slow increase of Blood Angels being added to the background over the course of each episode. By episode 40, we should have James in a full tan take it. Keep going, <laughs> lads. Uh, uh, well, a bit different, bit of a different dress today. We've had a bit of an ultramarine overhaul. Yeah, yeah. But in general, yeah, fair, fair enough. Yeah, a little bit of an ultra. You know, and the, the walls are blue, so it's appropriate for the episode as well. So, yeah. yeah, there you go. So yeah, I did actually need to, I forgot to do something uh, earlier on, which I do need to do, because otherwise it's going to, I'm going to feel very guilty for not doing it. When I was coming back from holiday, I got on the plane to come back. And as I was going up the stairs, a member of cabin crew stopped and went, are you James from Siege? So Frankie, I have to give you a shout out for the phenomenal <laughs> flight. Um, <laughs> I'm big so, ups, Frankie. Uh, Frank, I've got to say uh, a big thank you for for being so kind, and, and it was really nice to meet you on the flight. Um, uh, he, he collected knights and was showing me like all the knights and tower and stuff that he was he was. Uh, that's collecting. actually so amazing. That's I have, to, I, have yeah. to, I have to I have to just stop and say a big thank you to him because I it was I I re remember to obviously do it, but I I kind of went off on a tangent at the beginning. So yeah, yeah. you were so like. Fired up on second edition. Up. Yeah, yeah. So sorry to chuck that in, but I have to do that. Well, cause, cause, I'm, sure, um, I'm sure Frankie will understand. Yeah. But, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at cstudios.co.uk. And just for you podcast listeners, you can get 5% off of your first commission with us by using code PAINT5. Now back to the show. So we painted uh, some new Marines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as the topic for this week. Yeah, a few people might have picked up as we were dropping them what the theme was on these latest releases that we were going for. Yep. So uh, all the new Space Marines that were revealed by GW, we fortunately got to uh, preview for the article. Uh, and we set a bit of a challenge for ourselves amongst the team. So rather than normally when there's a release like this, we'd be like, oh, what chapter should we paint them as? What scheme should we do them as? And we thought it was really good fun when we'd done the, the challenge for the Tyranids of doing all the different schemes. We thought, oh, 
let's do a bunch of different schemes. But to tie them in, we've done all Ultramarine successes. So uh, the miniatures that we painted were uh, the new... Um, well, yeah, we got through some of the company heroes. Um, we got through... We added in, we still had some of the Warhammer heroes um, yep. to paint as well, the, um, the blind box thing. Mm -hmm. So we added some of those in. Um, and the jump pack intercessors we had in there as well. So between a mix of all of those, um, we kind of all just picked a model or two that yep. we wanted to I'll paint. I'll throw, uh, if you're watching the video version of the podcast on YouTube, I'll have those on screen for you now. Uh, the chapters we chose were Scythes of the Emperor, uh, Marines Errant, Castellans of the Rift, Genesis Chapter, definitely not Blood Angels, Brazen Consoles, Aurora Chapter, Iron Snakes and Black Consoles. Yeah. James, you misunderstood the assignment. <laughs> no, I was skillful. Actually, I just want to point out that I didn't choose Genesis chapter. Joe chose it and I conveniently yeah. looked at it and went, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, no, no. I chose it because you were going to paint it as a blood angel. Yeah. So I was like, we're doing the ultramarines thing. Like, yeah. There's this ultramarine successor that basically looks like blood angels. Yeah. Do you want to just paint this successor Pre predating that conversation there was no like negotiation James was like the new captain's out I'm painting it as a blood angel obviously yeah. I, know I don't pay for the company but I'm taking that model and I'm painting <laughs> yeah, it as a blood angel yeah. so which is like fair enough I did was, I, I did. it was like in love with that captain as soon as he saw it so fair yeah. enough but we come up with that I feel like it's a good compromise here's we can still do it as the ultramarine no, successor it's, ju it's just called tactful painting that's, yeah. that's what it well, basically no, is brought it in that, no, it brought no, it in. no no you're not going <laughs> out of this because not only, we was like okay well we can do it as as the Genesis chapter and we'll do like the shoulder pads for it and everything and if down the line you want to change to a blood angel that's up to you you didn't do that you put blood drops on the the purity seals yeah. for one right Who's to say he didn't fight with yeah. Blood Angels? He's an assault you captain. changed the head to look like the most blood angel man I've ever seen in my life and then Hang you painted second. the Aquila so the what? wrong Gen colour. Genesis chapter can't have blonde blonde hair? No. Okay. They All also right. can't have like vampire teeth and blood hair. Yeah. Yeah. Number but one, he doesn't have vampire teeth for a start. That's, that's, he might that as well have vampire, vampire teeth. Vampire, vampire, yeah, vampire, teeth. Yeah, vampire teeth. That head is from the limited edition captain with the outstretched plasma and power fist. So it's not even a blood angel head. All I'm saying is the Aquila then was painted the wrong colour. So that it didn't was, do the shoulder pads. It was blood angels instead of. So it was a it was a misunderstood assignment. But I've got it. I've got it. You I, were I, so close to getting away with it. Yeah. it was the perfect crime. Yeah, if you'd have if you'd have done one of those things, I tried to sneak. The we blood might drops have not. The, we the, might have not even noticed. Yeah, yeah. the blood I, drops. We might have not even noticed. I, I wouldn't have noticed. That, that was a cheeky little. little if the rest of it was done detail. properly, he wasn't trying to get away with it. He pointed them out to me. I yeah, didn't even see them. He's exactly. like, "Oh, did you see here? I've done the, the blood drops." I'm like, yeah. Brilliant. Hey, look, he could have, he could have served. So, the yeah, James so. misunderstood the assignment. The model did look very nice, though. The model was. The See, model what was I then great. conveniently, I told you I needed a new Lord of Skyfall. So, then what I basically did is I just, once the project was completed, I then added on all the bits that are Blood Angel and turned him from Varro, which is what we named him as a random captain from the Genesis chapter, into Lord of Skyfall Matano, eighth company captain. Do you know what was so, funny about that? You know how James had the, the little rant about the. Uh, the cape being fireproof when that model was revealed. Yeah. Did you see that Darren Latham commented on that video <laughs> yeah. and confirmed yeah. that it was fireproof? Yeah. <laughs> Look, as I mentioned, when you see the model 2D, things don't always look the way they do in hand. When I got the model and built it, the cape was well out of the way of any jump pack exhaust Yeah, but it doesn't matter that whether it was out of the way, it's fireproof. It's fireproof. Darren Latham said so. Okay. Yeah. You got called out by the designer. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I'm more Not than happy. Not called out, corrected. I'm more corrected. Than, I am more than happy. Put in your be, place, some would say, Joe. I, I am more than happy to be humbled completely by it. But yes. um, but the model itself is, uh, is, is phenomenal. And the cape, I can confirm the cape does not get in the way of the jump pack. Um, yeah, no, really good. Enjoyed it hugely. Uh, obviously, painting red and uh, and yeah, like I, I I genuinely think it's one of my favourite models I've painted. Yeah, genuinely. So that it does that whole conversation, as funny as it is, does highlight one of the points that I wanted to make in this style of video, which is that if you want to pick a certain chapter, there is almost I I would encourage people not to only be drawn in by the color scheme because you could love um, the lore of the Ultramarines, for example, but love the look of the Blood Angels. And there's a chapter for you. There is probably a successor chapter for whatever chapter you want to pick that looks like the other one that you prefer the look of. So like, if you want to 
if you wanted your army to be to do with ultramarines, we're kind of showcasing how many. I mean, none of the others off the top of my head really look. I mean, the, arguably the Aurora one kind of salamandery, but not like full on salamanders. Mm. But like James's one in particular, like you don't just because you want to paint red, don't just automatically go. Oh, I suppose I've got to do blood angels. Yeah, no, exactly. Like yeah, you can, can do ultramarines, and there's a successor chapter there with some lore with all this stuff. With some notable characters, I think that are actually named in in the, some of the books. And in things. some books, yeah. So there's a lot of lore there for a successor chapter that looks like Blood Angels, and you can still paint your red and have a an ultramarine. It's amazing successor. how many. I like to think of myself as someone who knows like quite a lot of the marine chapters. Quite a big Space Marine fan. It's amazing how if you just go down a lexicon and rabbit hole, how many mm. like chapters come not, out. Of not to mention you can make your own. Obviously. Yeah, there is there that, is that, as, that well. as well. Um, the, the other thing I just wanted to point out, just to go on it, I actually was committed to painting him as a non-blood angel because I actually was going to paint him as a Sons of Aura. So it's still a blood, uh, a, still a red chapter, but it would have had white pads. But conveniently, Joe pointed out that the Genesis chapter. Yeah, but the, the plan was still so that you could eventually turn it into a blood angel. Yeah, so yeah. So it was the was same thing. I yeah. just thought I'd point you towards one that would make that a bit easier. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So, and you spat in our face. Yeah, none of the, none of the others I think are particularly reminiscent the, the one none of the ones that we did are particularly reminiscent of um, any other chapter like really. any other first founding chapter yeah although i would say the one that i'm working on which you don't have completed images of right now but the, there should be pictures up at the weekend after this episode they'll be on up. the uh, siege instagram at siege studios yeah but they won't be probably on this episode um it's it's black legion colors it's literally black legion it's also colors. It's just black with with uh, gold trim. It could kind of be whatever, like yeah. black space marine. It could be black. Yeah, but like specifically, wanted, like... it's like because of the gold trim. I think it was just instantly. It it's red, like, we're it looks... uh, red weapons. It's yeah. like instantly reminiscent of Black Legion yeah. to me. Um, so yeah, it's it's been. I, I had the, one of the Warhammer Heroes models for mine, and um, it's the one throwing the grenade, which it's great also uh, instantly. I've never. I realized I've never actually painted smoke before. Oh, really? I've never had a model that had smoke. You don't get a lot of smoke, weirdly. No. No. Like, no. even when I was doing my Death Guard stuff, I remember, I think Typhus has like a load of smoke, but you cannot put that on. Yeah. I just didn't put that on. Does that go back to your comments about how when you're building the models? You yeah, yeah, exactly. Extra it's stuff like, on. Why would I put this whole thing of smoke with like flies on it? I'll just leave that off. Yeah. Um, yeah so that's that's been fun. Um, obviously, like I said, I've. I, it does go back to the comment of what you're saying about being able to take a break and reset rather than push through all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because we had that conversation and I thought that I'd like messed everything up and it was with the edge highlights. And then once I just, I took a night and I, I just didn't paint at all. I didn't even look at it. And then the next day, like I said, I went back, addressed all the issues, just cleaned it up, basically took it back a step or two. And then went back in with a bit of more of a fresh mindset, and I think did, I've done. Some it's the hardest work thing to try on. and convince yourself to do, but it always works. Like, it always works. I'm just kind of. I almost like I get to that point a lot in models, and I and I'm sort of sick of it. Like I'm sick of getting to a certain point and going, oh, I don't. I've messed it up. I don't want to paint it now. Like so, it was. It's one of the first times where I've like pushed through, um, that kind of thing, and obviously I'm. I'm benefiting from it now because it looks a lot better than most other stuff that I've painted yeah I mean part of why I'm preaching that so much now is I've gone from like I'm now probably at like the healthiest point in the hobby where I'm like spending like an appropriate amount of time on it because mm. I was commission painting full time for a couple of years and I'm a bit like you James a bit of a workaholic like I went way too far like the wrong way I was painting like 12 hours a day most days like six days a week which is way too much and you forget the burnout like not I don't, sustainable it's not but it's not even just that it's like you don't improve everyone says like the ten thousand hour thing it's like yeah but what are you spending those ten thousand hours doing because if you're just like doing the same sort of thing all the time i've got to you're not actually really going to improve i've got to say that like you could work 12 hours a day but you could be in, in, uh, inefficient in those 12 hours exactly and it's about being efficient and doing things that maximize quality and also time investment yeah um so you're efficient with your time but you're hitting the best quality there is a fine balance um I mean, yeah. I started dialing it back to like towards the end of doing that. I started dialing yeah. back to like five days a week and I was found that I was getting more done even yeah. though I was spending less hours doing it because having that mental break, like you come back just way more efficient, you realize you're making mistakes. And then on the flip side of that now, working here full time, I'm back to like 
I guess, more average hobbyists, like just painting in the evenings. Yeah. And I only do that like probably three, four nights four a week. week. Or four weekends mm. and bits and bobs. Like but that. in that downtime, like one, like I said, you get kind of the withdrawal. So I'm more excited to paint now Yeah. because I don't get to do it as much. And you spend like, just in the back of your mind, you're like having more thoughts about it, right? So because you've been, you've only, say I've only painted like two hours the evening the night before, I didn't finish the thing I was working on. I'm sat spending the next day like in the back of your mind, like on your lunch break, you're like, oh, actually I've thought of another idea for that. Because you've had that time away from it, you've got these like fresh ideas on how you're approaching things or mm. other ideas, concepts, things you could be doing. Yeah. 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 It's definitely, I mean, even in a really scaled down version of that, obviously I benefited from that on, on this model. Um, and I'm, I'm like, actually, it got to a point where I'm like actually looking forward to, oh, what am I going to paint next rather than, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to look at it tonight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I mean, black is easy enough to paint. I've, it, I just went down the normal kind of, um, I went with the 950 as the, the thing, which we've kind of spoke about briefly on here before. Um, and then, luckily enough, you only really have to then tackle the edge highlights because it's black. And I haven't done like a Zenith or anything. So went straight to Incubi. Didn't, I haven't really done any mixes. I've just went like Incubi, then Thunderhawk. Um, Memories. And then, yeah, uh, George has bullied me into doing uh, <laughs> bullied, an, an extra. <laughs> every time I post it, every time I post it, I like, mentioned it. Um, uh, yeah, like an extra little, like just corners and dots. And I said stuff this to you, right? You put all the work in for doing the two stages of the highlights. You've done the hard bit. Yeah. yeah. Add the third stage. It's such a dots, small yeah. thing to do when yeah, you've laid yeah, that yeah. groundwork. Yeah. And it I, makes I, I, such I, a difference yeah. to the and, and, and the dots as well. So, yeah. like adding the, like the last stage. But that would take, doing well. those final two stages of the highlights would probably take like. Half less than time. half the time yeah, 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 I know, the first two and it adds so much yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where so, the difference happens <laughs> that's the good bit yeah. So yeah I'm going up to uh, to Femerizian and then Blue Horror Blue Horror Dots yeah. probably. fun fact but, that is literally the Black Leech recipe from GW well there we go yeah. so that's what I said I told you yeah. although where I would have deviated from whatever they use is I went down your route of the scale golds yeah um, the gold the doing the gold trim is has been interesting because it's like which gold are you using so i started with the base coat was the dwarven one which is not yeah, your dwarven not has your, trash coverage not your one which yeah. isn't wasn't bad though it's it, not it bad it's few, better, dwarven yeah. over another better covering metal is, is yeah like yeah it's dwarven a really nice color I love dwarven. Dwarven and but it's not it's great the reason i like the scale color one specifically that I mentioned on that episode was because they cover super yeah. super quick the the issue that i'm having with that is like I just hate edge highlighting metallics. I can never make it look like I can never get it. I spoke about it on the, the Tyranids thing. I just can't like get it looking fine enough. Do you know what I mean? Like if Do you mean like the actual thickness of the line? Yeah, yeah. Like it's so, even when they're on like corners, I feel like I just struggle to get the right consistency, I guess, with the paint. I mean, metallics it, but... behave do you know different what? yeah this, exactly. not, not necessarily because they're metallic but i find that there's more variety in the consistency of a metallic paint out of the pot Amen, yeah. than there is yeah, from yeah. most other acrylics yeah like so even they, even within the scale color range like i said like viking gold is like reasonably thick covers super like one two coats really dwarven gold is like a lot thinner yeah goes on a lot more watery tends to separate on the palette you and just, I, you I just also, need to mix mix the metallics to get the consistency right so that it behaves the same as a normal acrylic in the way that you can do the edge yeah um, some paints as well really the wet palette's fighting you it might be worth using a dry palette yeah I agree. oh with metallics i, I tend to use a dry palette yeah, anyway because yeah. i'll use a wet palette for metallics still I, i'm not someone who's like against that but it does depend on the paint for me like Correct, yeah. i'll just go case by case yeah, there's yeah. way more variety in paint consistency with metallics yeah. as yeah. a rule I, um, i'm definitely leaning more into i'm just kind of trying to do a more shading mm. and then i'm just gonna try one really thin uh edge on them but yeah it's been been fun to paint by the end of it um and again what chapter I, is it it's black consoles okay which yeah. again has uh, it's uh the symbols like the raptor symbol basically yeah yeah um and um which uh handily enough um is on the transfer sheet now in the jump pack intercessors yeah it is yeah yeah box, which is really nice cool transfer surprise. sheet the new one yeah i've yeah. got to say that's one thing that i think that it, it, you i've got to say that the games workshop has really rectified you used to just get ultramarines in there which don't get me wrong it's all well and good everyone's got a drawer full of everyone's got thousands transfers. of ultramarine transfers but to have people a, that have clicked on this probably do 
quite enjoy having a draw full of ultramarines transfers. Yeah. So we, we yeah. won't go there's, too negative on there's it. There's nothing. But... There's nothing too bad with having them. But what what I was trying to get at is just adding a sheet which allows the option of choice to either create your own chapter using a potential icon or having a few more uh, different chapters. You know, my favorite thing is with the new transfer sheet. You've got loads of Roman numerals on there now, yeah, yeah, yeah. which are just universally useful. Like not even just on Marines, right? Like yeah. That's just that's just useful to have. And there's a uh, purity seal uh, text, which is oh, glossed cool. over. Yeah. I don't think people uh, people take too much note of them. I love them. Like, I, think- I, I quite enjoy freehand in the text, but if you're someone who's like not got the best brush control, like a nice, well, like made transfer for some period seal text is yeah. tremendous. Just yeah. cut out a tiny little bit, put it on the period seal. Yeah. Hair dryer. No, I agree. Mm. Yeah. I agree. Happy days. Yeah, good. Yeah. I'll tell you what was funny actually. I would, obviously the, the weapon casing's red and I thought I'm not going to go down the step like I would normally just go straight in Mephiston and yeah. like whatever. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try. I've got a few other red paints I'm going to try. I tried like Vallejo bloody red or something. Mm-hmm. Just like horrible. <laughs> just like <laughs> The just, like, just the worst like just yeah the coverage wasn't nice and then like it was just it felt really glossy yeah it was like, normally a pretty like safe know, bet for acrylic yeah normally, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know whether i said a dodgy pot or whatever but i did like a few coats so i was like oh, get i've them, had get I've them had, a fist and it's, it's better through the airbrush but now just went straight over the, the yeah it did seem like it would be something bloody red be, is better through the airbrush be maybe yeah. better through the air, airbrush well but, um, speaking of bloody red i'm guessing you used blood red on yours you win, bingo. Yeah. You win can you not price. tell from needing sunglasses to look yeah, at Can you not tell from the fact that you went blind after yeah. looking at the model? Yeah, I told you. It's it's, it's a very... We great... did say on that episode that I, I did give the you a bit of cred still, for, yeah. uh, for the blood red. Yeah, yeah. the vibrancy yeah. is uh, is just amazing. It's got such a rich, warm, vibrant finish when you airbrush it. it I just, uh, I can't, put, I, I've, I haven't changed it because it's such a good red. Um, yeah. It looks like, do you know what it looks like? You know when you're like driving in the dark and there's a stop sign and your headlights like reflect off of them? It's like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But interesting, interesting enough, there used to be, there used to be a, a, a hex pot called Blood Angels Red and there, and then that one is way more orangey than Blood Red. Blood Red mm. is a red, like it is a vibrant, super rich. <laughs> blood Red is a red. No, what Thank I mean. You. That's <laughs> the sort of stuff you're tuning in for. Yeah. That's the sort of insight. What I saw things that the listeners really can rely on us for what week I, after week. They I come back for the go, knowledge yeah. dump. What What I mean is that it's some some reds tend to have a bit of an orangey hue in them. Yeah. Like, for example, yeah. Wild Rider. It's, it's called Wild Rider Red, but it, it's got an orangey hue to it. You're, do you like Wild Rider Red? I do, yeah. yeah. I don't like Wild Rider yeah. Red. Yeah. First it saturates your models. Yeah. So I, first stage because the because Blood Red is so vibrant for the edges because it's I, I literally edge with Wild Rider first. That's the first stage highlight on Blood Red. That's like my third stage. I'm doing a Blood Angel with mm. the current metallic uh, current metallics. Sorry, current with the current, metallics. With the current <laughs> Thanks, range of reds. Angel, metallics. What are you on about? <laughs> yeah, you call yourself a Blood Angel. George fan. exposed yeah. <laughs> for just doing contrast over metallics. Yeah. All of his it's the new it's the new contrast that you call Blood Red. There is a Blood Red. It's Blood uh, Angels Red. Blood Angels Red. Blood Angels Red. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the name is back in back in back in service. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's great. It's good good paint for the airbrush as well. So yeah, or the blood red or the blood Both of them, yeah, both of them are good. Yeah. How does so, the yeah. color compare with the the new stuff? Uh, it's not as vibrant. Uh, obviously, if you put it over a white base, the contrast is quite punchy. But but I, I still think blood red trumps it. So so yeah, still horrible to use. <laughs> We're not with an airbrush. <laughs> <laughs> it's just defeats the point. That was the discussion though, because I said you can airbrush it on, and then you go in with the brush, and it's like a different color. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Well, George. You don't hammer nails. Just stop making mistakes. You, you Just stop making mistakes. You don't George. hammer Just nails in with a sledgehammer, do you? Like, you Just know? be better. Yeah. You, you don't, I said you use different tools with different jobs. So, so yeah. yeah. Anyway. You can use your little kiddie paints where you're allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. You're a freshers. <laughs> yeah. We let the big boys airbrush their, <laughs> their, blood, their blood red. Just to caveat, I never said that. So, so yeah. Uh, I did the uh, company champion. Company yeah, champion. Yeah. Yeah. Company yeah. champion. Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's not Obi-Wan Kenobi. He, he looks a bit We've like had this discussion. Well, we had an argument in the office about yeah. this. James kept calling it Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think Adam pointed out that it's more like Aragorn. It literally it's looks like, like Aragorn. From... Maybe more Aragorn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Obi- Obi- I think of Obi-Wan as like the the sword facing forward. Like yeah. There is a pose yeah. where yeah. he is like that, but still, anyway. Yeah. Well, I painted that one. Model is sick. What's the, the uh, chapter name? Castellans of the Rift. Great, Love great it. chapter. And the color scheme is... I found out about that chapter through uh, following some of the heavy metal guys on Instagram. Kieran? 
No, so I've seen a few of them do it before, but a few months ago, um, Gavin Garza, who won uh, Slayer with his skink model a few years ago, he yeah. paints for Heavy Metal now, and he posted one of the new Terminators painted in uh, Castellans of the Rift scheme, yeah. and he had a recipe for it in the description of his post. And I had that sort of like bookmarked like on my page. I was like, there'll be a day when this, <laughs> when this, when this happens. And then you said we was doing Ultramarine successes, and I'm like, brilliant. Phone rings. Op- opened up that went straight to it. It was zero thought in my mind. I was like, instantly, I'm doing that. Uh, so I used it's that. It's a recipe. really cool color scheme. Like the my girlfriend called it a pistachio marine. <laughs> it's very yeah. I get it. Yeah, it's it. a very pistachio kind of green. But it is, it's cool. I, I think the red accent, it's got red accents on I memory, had, so it's correct, On that, it? I had yeah. pistachio ice cream for the first time the other day. And it what? was that exact time. Hang on color. a sec. Hang on. No, this is, hang on. Wait the a sec. first time? Wait a I've second. I've never had pistachio ice cream. What? How was it? It's all right. <laughs> it's all, it's all right. Sorry. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it's weird that it does, this is going to sound, I'm going to try and You're not say. say it's green. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's weird how much it literally does just taste the same as pistachios. Because like, normally if something's like, oh, strawberry flavoured, it doesn't taste the same as eating a strawberry. I think that's because like, you know they I mean? have to actually use pistachios in it. Yeah. Because yeah. there's just it no way to replicate that flavour. Ju- yeah. So, it's a bit of a weird. It was a bit of a weird sensory thing because I was like, "It's cold, but it's pistachios." Do you know did, what I mean? It's weird. Did you like it? Um, He's undecided. He came, in with, he came in with this. I was thinking he was going to have like a rage review. He was like, "Oh, I tried pistachio ice cream for the first time." Isn't no, it no, no, no. The the point was that it was the same color as that armor. So she's got. So Pearl's got a good Pearl's point. Right, yeah, is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's all right. I, I wouldn't. I'm not going to recommend it. I'm disappointed. I'm not gonna I think, you're not going to recommend good. it. No, pistachio is nah, nah. pretty good as an pistachio ice cream. Solid. Yeah. yeah, pistachios, brilliant. Pistachio ice cream, like does everything. Need pistachio no. ice cream, solid. Oh, pistachio ice cream, solid. Mm, no. That's great. I don't know. I wasn't a fan. Leave your opinion in the comments. <laughs> too too <laughs> pistachio-y. How do you feel about <laughs> other nuts in ice cream? Hazelnut. <laughs> Hazelnut's good. It's fine. Mm. Oh, hazelnut gets a pass. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> almond. Almond's good. But pistachio specifically, just too. I don't know. Yeah, it's too strong. Yeah. But but more importantly, the hue was the same as oh, as the armor enough. of your your marine. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. It has well, got. Well, it's driving me nuts. It has got red trims, isn't it? No, not trim. Red accents. Red accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. 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 Um, a couple of things to note. Is it black trims? It's gold. It's gold. Cloth is black. Backpack's black. Am oh. I going insane? There are red parts on it, though, aren't there? There's in, like in the, the um, red lightning on the on yeah the sword. in the in the um, in the the lenses are red on the and on the, the chapter symbol and, and the on lenses the lens, are red on yeah. The, yeah okay that's because yeah. I'm a color theory genius and I listen to our podcast episode and I'm like <laughs> yeah red is the opposite of green yeah 4D chess I'm playing up here mm. yeah no bone to pick with Gavin Garza uh, that recipe nightmare <laughs> um, looks tremendous great fun to paint um, the base mix is three colors <laughs> and it's like four to two to one it's it's a bit much a poor uh, yeah, but this look, poor, poor workman blames his tool, George. Yeah, come you, on, you got to put on, the work in. Come on, you've just, the, you've just said on. how good the result yeah, is. You can't. It looks sick, right? Do you know the problem is because I was painting because <laughs> I was painting one model. I only did the mix like one. If I was painting like an army, I'd obviously That's like match like a, a big pre mix. But I made I made a little mix on my palette. and I didn't make enough. <laughs> it's when I it's when I like when you get into hearing about those kind of mixes for like box art models or just what the high level painters are doing. That is one of the things where I'm like, oh, they're so far ahead. Like I couldn't Do you know why sit it is, there though? and work out these complicated mixes. Do you know why it's though? It's because when you're shading, you can use colors within that mix and you don't get the staining because it's already got that hue in it. Yeah, it's right. like, it's okay. So perfect. say for example, you're going to, say you took, we'll do a Blood Angel. I don't you don't know. have to. We'll it's do a Blood it's Angel. It's say you're painting Mephist and Red, right? As a base coat and you're going to glaze down and shade it with say like Corn Red which would work quite well because the reds cover nicely, but you're more likely to get staining with that, right? Whereas if you start with a base mix of, say, 50-50 Mephiston red and corn red, and then you glaze it down with the corn red because it's already got that in it, the, it, the, the transition is support. super smooth. And then you can start building that up. You can go dark. You could add some black, whatever, and then build up on top of that. You could start highlighting. Go, same with the highlights. So because your base mix is 50-50 corn and Mephiston, it's a you could highlight it with Mephiston. Yeah. So, so with this, I mean, it makes more... perfect sense, but I mean, to sit there and work it out as and have it. Oh, be that so I perfect, can't compute. How you come such, up with that is yeah. well beyond me. We've had it before with some painters doing like certain things, whether they've done it for tutorials or for jobs, and I'm like, that looks incredible. How on earth did you come up with that? 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no part of me would think like, oh, this grey colour that doesn't exist. The, I know, I'll mix. The, re the Retributor, yeah. <laughs> Retributor armour colour. That's the kit. That's a, yeah, that's a classic one. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've, we've done we've done a lot of projects in the past where we've had some crazy mixes on things uh, that, that you think, well, how the hell does that work? And then you see it on the model and you're like, it's, yeah. it's mental. So, but, but I guess, also, like, you won't believe, like, I'll, I'll pull up a recipe form and be like, oh, this is the wrong recipe form. Oh, oh no, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it... There are obviously, if someone doesn't want to put all of that effort in, you're obviously trying to mimic a higher level thing. Sure. But there are some paints you can substitute and yeah. there are probably easier ways to do it. Um, Should we talk about the Marines that uh, Adam did? Yeah. Yeah. So Adam got through quite, quite, a, few. quite a few of them. So Showing us up. Yeah. He did um, the two. The Scythe so Emperor, that's... the Marines Errant, he'd done the Aurora Chapter and the Iron Snake, and also he'd done the Brazen, Brazen, consoles. Brazen consoles, which Yeah, so the two from the Company Heroes. Yeah. Like, uh, I said on here, my favourite model from that Company Heroes thing is the Ancient, mm -hmm. and I think he's done an incredible job. Oh, he's, he smashed it, yeah. Like, such yeah. a good paint scheme. Like, split schemes on, like, Ancients, with something with a banner, mm. always just looks so good. Because well, the cause banner's split. Because the banner's split as well. Yeah. Like, it just amplifies it all i don't know if this is like right or wrong but i i wonder how i would feel about if the yeah you're gonna say what i think the color was flipped yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah the only I thing with that is that that with chapters they are specifically split it's left it's and right it's supposed to be specific. one well the thing like, is like, the yeah. flipped could be a different chapter i figured that you know might I mean? be part of the reason but the the banner is the effigy of the chapter so it, it wouldn't make sense it being a different to the color scheme of the marine. The interesting thing about it is that because of how the symbol is, the symbol has a white bit on the bottom left as you're yeah. looking at it. And obviously, usually the symbol's on the left shoulder pad, which is completely blue, mm -hmm. so you can see it all. Mm -hmm. But then obviously what we've found with that is that the bottom left of the symbol, which is white, mm. is on the white half of the uh, yeah. yeah of the thing, which isn't which is a bit unfortunate. But don't really know if there's a a way around that you could do. But color scheme looks great, I think. Yeah, and it's it's I do like when um, successor chapters have at least something calling back to, to the, the original to chapter. the original chapter. So there's some it's blue and mm -hmm. white, like blue and white is in the Ultramarines color scheme as yeah, it is. Yeah. I like when it's a different version of the original and you get that a lot with Dark Angels. That's one of the things I love about the, a lot of the Dark Angels successes is there's a lot of them that are like variations of green and bone and black. Um, I feel like you, whereas as we've explained on this you can get some wild ones on a... I think because of the size of the Ultramarines, on Ultramarines. As, a, as, a, as a chapter of like, obviously them having a lot of marines when they broke down into chapters from legion um it, it gives such a wide variety of opportunity for as a painter like you like we rightly said you maybe you like the rules for ultra marines or you like the, the heritage or the background of it but you maybe don't like the color scheme and and do, this shows obviously that but i like the fact that like you said i like the fact that you do have that nod to the original mm. thing which i think is good my, my my favorite i've got to say this like there's two for me which i absolutely loved scythe of the emperor 100 the the that 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 dude with the bionic arm the, the choice of lining up the the part with the history of the chapter and how he's a veteran he's fought nids he's lost his arm etc like he's got all these bionics with obviously painting it scythe of the emperor as well it's just a great use of the thing we talk about the uh the the, the heritage of the chapter plus also using that and overlaying that onto the model so it adds that nuance of of history to it as well which i think is really really good but um but yeah i've done an amazing job on it and using the red the saturated red on the casing on the rifle so you've got the you've actually got a, um, a primary color trial on there you've got the yellow the desaturated red and the blue for the little lenses and dials and things so it's still got a primary color triad but it, it's, it's like a skewed version a skewed of that. version of it a yeah, very with, subtle with, version of that yeah which I think is really good and obviously black not, not being yeah the gun is like I think it looks so cool such a nice red yeah, yeah. loads of people commented on that as well when they saw it on the article and, and we posted it and everything yeah um, it, just, it just looks great adds a bit of interest to, to that as well and the other has to be the Iron Snake because I read a load of the Iron Snake books when I was when I was younger um, they got anything to do with the bright green base 
No, actually, I'd done that all by himself. So uh, me and me and yeah, no, I was going to say is that one of the reasons the fellow, you love it because it no, looks no. looks fairly retro. Adam, it's like playing Adam, a game of blood Adam, Adam, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd win the game on his own. So, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's having having a model for, uh, of of the Iron Snakes, the Sons of Ithaca, I think, is a really good um, a really good. Uh, choice plus also it's silver as well and like from a from, from a painting perspective um of of creating a project and using uh, a paint which is quite easy to to apply and to add the accents of color to as well silver like if you look at paul norton's chapter i can't remember for for, what, for love nor money what they're called but um uh it like looks, iron, iron raven iron raven that's it yeah iron ravens yeah so paul's done a really good way of of um uh, Paul's done a really good way of of using silver as the main color, which is easy to execute. As in, I say, easy. You get it on. You can get an army done really quickly by adding colors to metallics, which is great. Um, and the sun, the iron snakes, iron snakes have that as well, which I think is a really good, a really good thing. That that white and blue uh, and red, I think, just really works extremely well for, as a as a color color colorway. Um, we've got it. We have we have actually not mentioned one of the marines on there as well, which I think we need to mention. There's a couple a couple left to talk about. Yeah. Paul from stores, uh, he does a lot of our packing and a lot of our uh, store work and stuff, obviously. In the room. He he joined the company and he, he enjoys painting, obviously done it. And so, but he's not really painted loads of Marines. And, and so we tasked him obviously with painting one of the, one of the heroes Marines for the, for this sort of, for this podcast. And also just, the, and I've got to say this, like it's, amazing to see his progression as a painter from from when he first started he, he, uh, people would have seen uh the tyranny that he did as well yeah on yeah those yeah. posts yeah so he 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 painted a mortifactor which again is a really awesome uh chapter with great backstory um and picked he's, another like quite complicated scheme it really. is like, yeah yeah it's, it's not even i get that it's not obviously like a split down the middle you don't have to actually no, draw a straight line but to to have to pick out all these like different random armor panels i always find that is a more complex colored trim as well. as well yeah as well yeah. colored trim yeah yeah um, but like Different just like trim, yeah. an extra bit of work yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah it's yeah. kind of a dark angels vibes isn't it sort of death wing almost it is all, well. all kind of uh dark angels colors yeah 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 and like again seeing him progress as a painter and just like uh like things like the stripes on the chainsaw the like the the, the staggered helmet colorization as well all that kind of stuff is is really cool to see so i've got to give him big props for for dipping his toe into the ultramarine pond on, for this one and, uh, and and producing a really fantastic model i love i don't know if this is on the box art or if paul's just done this off like the of his own accord but the on the chainsaw having like the casing kind Web of weathered no the casing's like blending into oh, okay. the the colors of the chapter mm. and then the actual like there's like the red like hub bit on top of it yeah yeah it just makes it look so cool i've never really seen that before i don't know if, what the box art is like on that because the box art is obviously an ultramarine yeah i don't know if the chain sword is like blue or not or I if it's just painted because i would i would instantly just paint that all as the same all as red yeah yeah um but the fact that he's kind of worked it into including the the chapter colors on there and then put the stripes on and then done the little the little red bit um yeah, so the the it's all painted black on the, yeah. the thing, and then the the bit that's red on this is done as 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 metallics. So I think I, I really like, I've never really even considered working like chapter colors into weapon casing. It's always just like one color. Yeah, I mean, but I think that looks really cool. So if you're into ultramarines and want to learn how to paint them, we've got some great options for you. We've got some PDFs on our web store and we also have some tutorials on our Patreon. Follow the links in the description of this video to go and check those out. So what's next? We've got a couple of others. We've got the uh, the other metallic one is the brazen consoles. Yeah, really cool again. Which is... Um, Do you know what my favorite part about that one is? Purple lenses. Yeah. yeah. They look sick. Yeah. Wouldn't have picked purple personally. Just wouldn't have wouldn't have occurred to me not that there's anything wrong with that it looks fantastic yeah really pops against like the as well a few there's only a few schemes where that's going to work because even even colors that go with purple i feel like purple lenses would look weird like if you did a red if you did red marines and did purple lenses sure that that goes i mean even like but it would look even like weird. imperial fist though like yellow that would technically make sense but it looks better with blue. Well, yeah yeah <laughs> well, because, My because the bronze is like a it, essentially obviously it's metallic but because the bronze is like a brown it's not it's not really like a a, 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 a color that does appear on the color wheel so so 
it's almost like it's kind of in like the orangey camp, I suppose. Kind, of, yeah, kind of, I suppose. But but it just lives nowhere, doesn't but, it? I mean, yeah. the, the use the the, the, the the purple lens is is really good because it works really well with the blue uh, energy glow on the sword and the lightning on the sword. So you've got that really nice comp, uh, complementary uh, sort of colors together, which I think works quite nicely. Um, but also just like the way he's painted it. Yeah, he's really done a great nice. job. It's yeah. really clean. I like the, the 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 lid or the helmet being painted in black as well. I think that's 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 really good um, to match the trim as well. Yeah, it's um, always cool to like. Gives you a couple of options for metallic marines to do as well if you're looking to do some ultramarine stuff because you can get as we we're saying about like like for example Paul Norton's uh, Iron Ravens like for example like the, the Sons of Ithaca or the, the Iron Snake sorry like having a metallic painted army as in like the armor color being metallic I think it gives you so many options to then just use spot colors quite effectively quite quickly. Um, you kind of like theoretically break it down a lot easier in terms of squads. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Like if you want different units to have different colors, it's not really going to clash too much. No, no, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah and the and other one was the Aurora chapter. Now, now Ad wanted to do something a bit special with this one because he'd seen the box art and seen them all obviously on the tactical rocks or the, or the poses that they were in, etc. And he just wanted to see what one looked like on a flight stand. Obviously, this isn't, if you're seeing it on screen now, this isn't something that the kit comes with just want to caveat that it's something that i had done off his it's own from the back. uh the inceptors kit yeah it is yeah so i'd basically just made a bit of a pilot hole um and then just obviously made a connection point for the flight stand just to see what one looks like as if it was jumping as in actually lifting off or landing for example or like but not touching the ground so he didn't make a pilot hole that fits perfectly does it fit perfectly oh i thought there was a pilot hole yeah. no there's the slot because it's got like a, a little sort of curve it sits yeah. perfectly into the slot oh, the right. okay I didn't he actually that. was showing me when he put that together he didn't even glue it at first it just balanced perfectly it just oh, that's sat. amazing yeah that's really good um I didn't so they that. so they fit better to the jump pack intercessors than they do to the uh I couldn't comment on that <laughs> because because like the inceptors I always found was a bit of a nightmare even just to glue in place. Yeah, I mean or, I don't know if that's necessarily stronger. It the just, weight of it the model, fit. the weight of the model is less. I think one thing with the inceptors is you glue it and you put them on and gradually it will it will turn. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing model. is when you look at that model, it's like tilting forward, so its legs are back. Yeah. Whereas the inceptors are the entire model. The entire like model is forward. in front of it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like sticking his arms and legs out in front of it. Yeah. It's probably going to depend on the pose. Like that model specifically fits quite well on it. But for yeah. example, like the brazen consoles model, I don't think would fit very well on a flight stand at all. No. Uh, no, um, potentially not. Because also of... part of the difficulty that you mentioned is obviously if you are going to cut the tactical rocks off the feet, depending on how it's sculpted, some are going to suit that better than others. Yeah. Um, yeah. You might have to get some great stuff. But I think out. that I think that's good though, because then you have variation within the unit. You could have some that are landing, some that are flying, some that are, you there's you could make a really interesting looking unit for your army by fitting the pose to the different types of of way that they connect to the base as well. I think you could do away with the rock as well. What I see a lot of the time people doing with flying models is like a bit of scenery on yeah. the base. Yeah, yeah. And just sort of strategically do it in such a way that it looks like they're maybe like flying over it or they've just yeah. come down to land on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's entire models that are actually sculpted like that, aren't there? That's like, yeah, yeah. Um, or even like, um, oh, what's the huge Lumineth thing? The character, the main character, where it's got like the big, oh, the big uh, uh, like wing. Teclas. 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 Yeah. So Teclas. Yeah. It's basically supposed to be like flying or jumping or something. Yeah. yeah. Has the lightest connection to the wings of like the the monster that he's mm. with, and so you get that anyway on models um so it's obviously a technique you can do on your own with your basin i suppose um is that all of them that is all, all of them. them yeah that's everything yeah, so that's, that's a lot of different ways that you can paint your ultramarines um and how uh, i mean they they all fit these new models really well like you know when you see some models and you're like like you obviously saw that captain you were like that has to be a blood angel or that's a very biased view though or like part, genesis so. Genesis yeah, but it just chapter. suits. It just suits better. Like jump yeah. packs, blood angels, there. Yeah, it. yeah. And I think I feel like they all look good in in the the chosen color schemes. Yeah, I did notice one difference between the captain and the normal jump infantry. He's got some some extra additional like guidance sort of flaps on his legs compared to their normal uh, assault marines. Hmm. Uh, which I, think I didn't realize as well. They've all got like little uh, little rocket boosters in the feet. Yeah, back of the feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big. Which you don't really see from the front. I, I just assumed that there was like a normal intercessor with a jump pack, but they are actually different legs. Touching upon that, I think you, I think a lot, what some people will do is they'll to make com, like different units. They'll get those jump packs and put them on assault intercessor legs as well, because then you can have running running ones on. The, on the I mean, if you bought a box of assault intercessors and a box of them, you you can have fun all day just yeah yeah smashing yeah. kits together. I mean, to be fair, the way that they're posed, you 
if you cut the rocks off or whatever, then they would just look like they were running. Mm -hmm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, you might not even need to do that. And then that way you still get the the the, the boosters on boosters the back of the, the leg. back of legs. Yeah, yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah, should we do a question of the week? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's do it. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have something that you would like us to answer on the podcast, please leave it in the comments section of the video version of the podcast on YouTube. Uh, Macintosh Rowan says, with big panels such as an Imperial Knight, what is a good way of keeping detail? So when you when he says about keeping detail, I'm going to take that as uh, putting paint on thinner, mm -hmm. not obscuring detail. I think that's there's lots of ways you could uh, yeah I, I'm not I, I just want to try and think of all different ways that that could be determined but but I I I think when you're painting something like that I would definitely approach it with the airbrush 100% um, purely because brush painting an object that large is going to lead to brush marks is going to lead to probably in irregular inconsistent paint thickness um, let's say you don't have an airbrush spray can spray can your main day, colour yeah like, all day long all day yeah, yeah. Um, base coating in the metallics of the night yeah while a tedious task is probably going to be a better end result in terms of worrying about brush marks on big yeah. panels, texture, things like that. Yeah, keeping panels separate to the exoskeleton of the model as well, whether you're doing a Knight, a Titan or whatever. I always forget you can do that. I've never built one. Yeah. But in my head, I'm just like, oh, you're going to have to do one or the other. But yeah, I guess you would build the skeleton to, and then put the panels on keep after. The, keep the panel separate as much as possible because then it, it gives you two separate painting projects, essentially, where you're working with different colors, well, I guess you could spray both then, couldn't you? You could spray the undersuit with your lead belt, just spray whatever, and then spray the armor panels. If you if you stuck all the panels on, then yes, you can, but it... But it no, I'm saying if you kept everything separate, yeah, you could definitely spray all the armor panels a different color than you did the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I did on my night, night armor. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, one thing I would say to as well is like that I see beginners often doing is don't use a wash on a big flat surface pin shade all day long yeah you're gonna have to yeah. go around good time to learn some brush control go around the edges you've got to love painting rivets as well so um yeah but but yeah i wouldn't just put wash all over it like it, it you're gonna cause a lot of problems by doing that if, if i mean that and it does also obscure details as well if you put on a lot of wash like if you whether you're whichever me method of washing the model you're doing, whether you're just putting loads on with a brush or if you're dunking it into one of those quick dip things or whatever, like, you know, um, you are going to gunk up details massively. Um, so, yeah. One, uh, two things I would advocate for. If you are going to use any washes on any of the metallics or anything like that, as you probably would with a knife with the undersuit and whatever, uh, don't be tempted to use a hairdryer to speed up the drying because you're way more likely to get push, tie push marks stuff, and yeah. push the it around and where it dries you might get those like sort of like pool, pooling is more visible yeah because it's drying quicker than it it's because you're putting on so much more material onto the object as well like yeah yeah you just don't want to overflow it and secondly because it's a big model like that this would apply to like vehicles and tanks and stuff as well is a gloss varnish the model before you start doing all of your shading yeah yeah because your research shaders are going to one flow much nicer into the into the crevices of the model and two it's going to be just smoother and quicker to go across you can make it after it's not it's not like you've got to have a gloss model at the end of it uh, matte varnish over gloss varnish we'll just leave you the matte finish cool hobby hacks this is our uh, closing tradition what we do weekly we share I, a little uh, I've been away so I've not been thinking of hobby so I've not been thinking of hobby well don't worry James because week after week I'm here to save the day for the hobby hacks where do you store your spray cans I want to give you the answer that I think you want to make your <laughs> point in the garage where I do my spraying Spoil a lot of people do the spraying. That's why I do my spraying. Mm -hmm. don't want to spray my, you're not going to spray in your house. I'm not an no. absolute madman. Yeah. I'm not going to spray in the garden. I, I don't, don't have a booth, so I do my, do my spray can no, no behavior. I don't, want to get, I don't want to get my Mephiston spray all over the grass in the garden. All right. Right. I'm not a heathen. So I uh, might, might do it in the garage. You might leave your spray can in there. It yeah. might get cold. We live in the UK. It tends to be cold 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. We have spoke about it before. What are the problems with spray cans? Weather, conditions, temperature all factors in mm -hmm. you might be thinking George just store your spray cans in the house and while you might be correct if it's warmer it generally behaves a bit better right say it's freezing cold outside you've got a room temperature spray can yep. you're still going to be kind of testing the waters a little bit you mm -hmm. might be uh, raising the risk profile here's my little hobby hack for you right in your sink fill up with war like lukewarm warmish not hot water Leave a spray can in there for uh, like five minutes, bring the temperature of the can up. When you go outside and it's freezing cold, because the can's kind of like preheated a little bit, I find that it doesn't cool down in the air as much. I don't struggle with mm -hmm. getting the, the sandy texture, the dusty texture. Yeah. this is I do this every time. Mm -hmm. And there is one problem to watch out for. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't say it, I'm going to say it. Which I experienced. Uh -huh. 
I heated it up too much. Uh huh. And when you heat it up too much, problems. It, it can, like the the bottom basically like popped, popped. Like the bottom of the can like popped out, like, like exploded the, like or like bulged out, like bulged out. Like it would have exploded if it if it broken, it would have just gone everywhere. Like it's like it like built up too much pressure. Uh-huh. So there is a middle ground. That, that wasn't really what I was going to want to. Yeah. I go for like barely like warm like not yeah yeah like you wouldn't wash the dishes in like not hot water yeah, like, but yeah. above room temp so i did uh, when i first did it i did it too much and it just mm. went and like i was like oh my god and then i looked down and it hadn't gone anywhere and i was like <laughs> god. So, so i'm gonna add on to this so doing it in water is all well and good and it does work 100 percent like you like you said a lot of people don't dry the cans properly after they've put them in the water which i don't just just to preface this do not get the top no, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the bottom. I'm okay. About the so, the the can is made out of uh, of metal that's folded into into a, a cylinder. Yeah. So there's obviously a seam line down uh-huh. that down that can. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Pop. Yeah. Out so bottom. what what happens is whether you heat it in, well if you heat it in water if you don't dry the cans properly with the towel afterwards as and get all the water off that seal um, on some cans I don't believe it's it's welded I believe it's just got some kind of like uh, crimp. Bond, yeah. like a crimp and a bonding agent or something the hot water will, the bonding agent it can it can perish the bonding agent and that's when you get like uh, hemorrhaging of paint out the bottom of the can sometimes um, or the worst thing which is rust as well so mm. the cans do rust so do dry them like in a towel so to marry onto your hobby hack I have got something which which I would like to add on if you don't want to put them in water put them in your airing cupboard for about 10-15 minutes because your airing cupboard is naturally warmer anyway because it's got your boiler in it. <laughs> this, you know what this reminds me of? You know when you like put a beer in the freezer because you don't want to wait for it to get yeah. cold and you forget about yeah, it. Yeah. It's like... it's, yeah, yeah. The thing is, is it, I don't, it, how common are, are, are airing cupboards like a... A lot of houses like, do have I don't have cupboards. one, but are they like, is that a common thing? Uh, I've, I've both had tip, them and not had them. Tip, yeah. so, well, yeah. If you do have an airing cupboard, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd recommend doing that because, uh, to, again, just to give as much value as possible for the hobby hack, I actually use airing cupboard for warming cans, like you said, and I also use it for when I put my PVA on the bases and put sand on. I put the models in the airing cupboard, and they dry really quick because of the because of the. I love I love the idea of like really going to get a towel. That's what or I was something just that's been like full of space for it. <laughs> yeah, it's I feel like most of your house is like that. To be fair, yeah, you can just go in any cupboard. Can there'll be some like, blood angels there. You like come out of the shower, you've forgotten a towel. You like don't want to quickly grab it from the airing cupboard, and then yeah. just like the sand everywhere. Yeah. There's models of yeah. spray cans. No, I've got a tray, mate. Put the tray in, on the shelf. Or Treats it like it? a pizza oven. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a big it's, pizza bill when yeah, he's like putting a tray of like, cans yeah. in. <laughs> Getting in a like, Titan out the air. Things of models in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but your airing cupboard does really works really well for that as well. In um, summary, spray cans are a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, warm them a little bit before you use them in, in the winter. Yeah, depths of winter. solid, uh, solid hack. There you go. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this episode of Paint Perspective. If you could please do us a huge favour, uh, one, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, and if you're listening on audio platform of choice, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever it may be, uh, please do follow us on those platforms. It really, really helps us out, and we can keep bringing these episodes for free every single week. Thank you very much. We will catch you next time. <laughs>